London! <laughs> I feel like a rock star. It's a little bit, isn't it? It's quite oh, bright. The <laughs> it's a bit meta, isn't it? Yeah. It's like See? three oh, of you one. now. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Impressive. Hello. Mm, hi. So, hi, guys. It's good to see you. It's great to be here. <laughs> <laughs> good. It's the thing to do on a Sunday morning. Mm. <laughs> and um, I know it's been a few years, what, about five years now since we've seen you guys on Merlin? Mm. Four. Yeah? Four years? <laughs> do you miss it? <laughs> no, yeah, I do. Yeah, I do as well. I, was, I mean, I was only on the show for a year, the last season, so yeah, I do miss it. I do miss it. I, I used boys. to be able to eat and... Uh, Pay for things, and now, <laughs> and now you're just it's broke. Quite, yeah, it's quite hard. I <laughs> know, uh, I do. It's like you know, it's a, a fantastic uh, show uh, to be part of, mm -hmm. and yeah, we don't get to do it. I don't get to wear yeah. chainmail every day. Yeah, I still have it, but I don't get to wear it every day. <laughs> have you still got yours? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I wear it most weeks, but yeah. on the weekend, just, just yeah. sit there crying. That's why I feel quite uncomfortable because normally right. Sunday I'm at home watching. You should have come in your chain mail. Know, this is like the right place to I look keen, I know. I know. <laughs> yeah, you should have worn it today. It's underneath. It's underneath. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, I mean, obviously, like, you guys have got a great banter. Do you see each other? Have you seen each other much since? Like, no, I no. can't remember his name. I was like trying to... Uh, I, thought, yeah, I, I, thought I, I thought I was billed with, uh, with uh, Tom Hopper, so I was really excited, and then I saw Rupert's name, and... Tried to cancel oh. many times, yeah. <laughs> but then I realised people had booked photo ops, group photo ops with yeah. you and me. So that was yeah. no, we have no banter at all. No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no it's good. Like uh, we still see a lot of each other actually. Mm -hmm. It's uh, and it's we, we see each other at these, don't we? Really? Yeah, and it's because a lot of us have been we've been busy, and so you do get to come together, and and we're all still yeah, we still see each other. Mm -hmm. I saw Tom last week, and then uh, mm -hmm. Bradley the week before, and. Um, yeah, you, so you run into each other. It's that weird thing. It's like being at school. When you're at school, most people go to school for five years, and Merlin was a bit like that, uh, that you, you know people inside and out. You, know, you argue like they're siblings. And, um, and so, yeah, you have this kind of unspoken friendship that mm -hmm. will annoyingly always probably be there. <laughs> <laughs> It's like leaving school, but not really quite leaving school. Not quite, no. Not quite. We didn't exciting. graduate with a cap and gown. <laughs> no. We just graduated. Yeah. We were with a gown. We got yeah. the Camelot gown. Yeah, mm. and the chainmail. And the chainmail. And the chainmail. <laughs> Better than a cap and gown. Yeah. Did you keep the sword? That would have been the cool thing. No. no, but then didn't Owen like Owen kill stole Owen? It. Owen stole every prop known to man. He literally went into <laughs> he went into Gaius's room on the last day of filming, and he just stole all the little apothecary yeah. bottles and. We said, "What's that? I don't know." I don't know. I'm just taking it. <laughs> But yeah, we, had, yeah, we, had, we, had a, we had a full bag full of stuff, it didn't extraordinary. we? And people running after him going, no, and you can't steal that, that's a higher prop. And he's like... <laughs> it was the fact that in the last day, we were like, oh, what's wrong with you? Because he was walking like that. <laughs> he was going like that. <laughs> and, Just uh, his pockets no, full. No, he had a sword. Oh, did he? Did he? <laughs> Like, oh, that's yeah. right, because he was... Yeah. We, so we, sit we, down, no? We all, we all got the train back from Cardiff to London together on that last day of filming. Mm -hmm. And he just... I can remember he had his, he had his foot. <laughs> like that. <laughs> he couldn't bend it. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you are right? He's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> just this gold hilt just sticking yeah. out of his jeans. He still has it. Still if has you watch it. him in anything now, he still does that. Like a night yeah. shift, he just brings it out. Yeah. Like, oh, and it's a different show. He's like, shink. <laughs> <laughs> You go to his house, there'll just be like a full Merlin set. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, Owen misses the show a lot more than us. He's just yeah. there crying into his props. <laughs> was um, the sword fighting one of the best parts of the show? Yeah, I think it was because you, you, most of what you saw were, with the sword fights were, were real. You know, they would mm -hmm. speed bits up every so often but it, and add sound effects, but it was actually there, so they were choreographed and. It was brilliant. You'd wake up in the morning and you'd get your chainmail and actually have sword fights, and it was, it was great. And then when you watched it back, it just always looked fantastic. And it yeah. was, you know, it's like every young boy's dream is to have sword fights. With my, um, yeah, my, f my first ever sword fight on Merlin. We'd been, I'd been rehearsing for a couple of, couple of months, a uh, couple of months, couple of weeks, and. Um, and it was outside the castle in Pierfon, which is where people can come and watch, which probably most of you came to watch sometimes. Mm -hmm. And not only so am I doing a, a, my first fight sequence for Merlin, doing it with Bradley, who's very, very good, um, and also I'm doing it in front of a crew, and also a lot of fans, about 200 people watching. So it no felt pressure. Like, nah, yeah, and then I got, <laughs> and then I think I got a whack on my thumb and b ballooned up and... Yeah, it was horrific. Yeah, you didn't put the work in, you see. If you put the work in, you don't get hit on the phone. No, it's fine. <laughs> All right, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the 
the things that I loved about it, I mean, like you're saying, there's loads of people who used to watch it, and there's a whole uh, sort of very diverse fan base. I certainly know both my sisters. For a while, it was their favourite show, and it was something... Still we not anymore? No? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know what they watch them. Um, but, um, you know, in terms of that and, like, your fan base, if you notice it's quite, you know, you get all people of all ages and you used to watch it together. We were talking about this yesterday. We were saying it's, it's the one of the last proper family, family shows. shows. Yeah. Because you know, Strictly and X Factor, you were saying yeah. yesterday, they, they've they've sort of they dominate the BBC and ITV sort of Saturday night, seven thirty, seven pm mm -hmm. slot. Yeah. You know, Doctor Who comes back, and you know that's gone a lot darker now. And mm -hmm. but Merlin was the sort of you, everyone could watch it from mm -hmm. your ch children to your grandparents and everything in between. So it was the yeah. first, it was the you know the proper last proper family show. Yeah, yeah. and what's really amazing about these thing uh, coming to conventions is you meet people now. I met someone who was saying. Uh, this was my childhood and people who are now growing up and re-watching it and, and that's what's exciting is seeing it on Netflix now and it's about starting sci-fi again yeah. that it's a, a whole new audience is coming to it and and it, it meant so much to so many people it is overwhelming how how popular it is and as you say different age groups different mm -hmm. uh, all around the world it's huge I've said yes. this before I went on holiday to Sri Lanka and I remember walking down this little path in the middle of nowhere you know with huts and someone just went Leon and I went <laughs> I was like, no, my, my ego is getting way too big. Yeah, <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, and this boy ran out and pretended to have a sword fight with me. And I was like, this is so bizarre. And it's huge in Sri Lanka. It's sold to I'm it sorry about that. I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> it's all right. Yeah. I keep following you. I'm like, where are you going on holiday? But mate? luckily, I am trained. He would have heard <laughs> no, that. But, um, <laughs> uh, but no, it's really, it's extraordinary how big it is uh, worldwide. And, and, you know, we've been to conventions worldwide. And, and it's you know it's a classic story and it's uh, it's it's great it's you know we we're very we're very lucky to be part yeah. of it. But I'm lucky. And Alex, because you were a fan of the show, weren't you? Before you were actually I on was, it. yeah, did I did. That, yeah, yeah. Did that make you kind um, of more? I actually, I, funny enough, I stopped watching it when a character called Sir Leon was introduced. That's sort of <laughs> like, oh, yeah. that's weird because that's when that's most when people got started. To <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bucked the trend. No, um, yeah, I watched season one as a fan. You know, I can remember it, it was the sort of. Robin Hood was finishing, and it was the sort of replacement of Robin Hood and Doctor Who, and it was always that Saturday night sort of yeah, slot that I would watch, I'd say, with my family, and I watched, yeah, I watched the whole first season. And then sort of just grew up, went to drama school, became an actor, so it, it was a weird to become part of a show, having watched the show and not never thinking that you would ever be in it, because at that time I never thought I was going to be an actor. Mm -hmm. So then I went to drama school and, and then graduated, did a job, and then suddenly they were like, we're looking for a older version of this guy, this headshot came through from my agent, and it was Asa, it was Asa Butterfield, and my agent said, you're sort of, you're passable. <laughs> Which is lovely to hear from your agent. Mm. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then, um, no, yeah, got the job, and yeah, it's, it's weird to be part of something that you actually have already a, a big love for, you know, mm. it's nice. But did it make you more nervous joining, or more excited? Nervous, um, I was very nervous on the read-through. Right. Very nervous at the read-through. And actually, Bradley made a joke in the, um, in the read-through. So I, in the read-through, we all got given name tags on, the, on this big round table, proper, not that the <laughs> round table. <laughs> Should have made a joke. Aww. Anyway, um, on this sort of table. And um, I'm sat, because I had most of my scenes in episode one and two with, with Katie and Colin and Bradley. So, I, so Richard Wilson was here, Colin was here, and Katie was opposite. And I can remember just sitting down with my scripts really early and everyone was coming back because you were all friends. You'd all been away mm. for four months. So it was a big family reunion and I was sort of sat on the table like, oh, no one knows me. <laughs> and we did the whole first episode, first two episodes. And then when there's, when there's that line with um, that Arthur says when, or well, it's Merlin who says, Mordred. Um, it, originally it was Arthur's line. Like I say, you don't, rec you don't recognize me, do you? You saved my life many years ago. And it was originally Arthur's line. And Bradley made the joke of instead of saying, Mordred, he went, Asa? <laughs> In the read-through. And I thought, oh, these guys are good. They're, you know, this, this is... Uh, <laughs> my life is going to be hell. Life, my life's going to be hell. Yeah. <laughs> Watch out for King Arthur. He's a, he's a joker. Um, no, so yeah, it was, it was, it was very nerve-wracking. But immediately got... Um, helped and brought into the, the gang because they are, you know, they, they, you're all really good friends. So it was, 
having to find my way in that. Well, it's funny that because Mordred obviously gets a bit of a hazing when he becomes a knight. It, was that was that was it was life imitating art or art imitating life. Yeah, no, I didn't. I never got hazed, but it was. It, it felt like you know trying to get into the big boy club a mm-hmm. little bit, you know. And um, but the guys were great, Rupert and Owen and Tom and Adi Tomo as well at the time. They, yeah, everyone was just took me in with open arms. Mm-hmm. And also, because I'm from Cardiff, uh-huh. and we film in Cardiff, um, my insider knowledge came in handy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I knew where to take them out, you know, have a good time. <laughs> so was that like your first week, just going out on First the, week, on first town. week, I was like, right, come on, tiger, tiger. <laughs> 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 but no, so yeah, no, they, 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 yeah, lovely, lovely team. Yeah, really lovely. And so, obviously, you're Leon, you're Mordred, you're both knights, who's better? <laughs> I'm not even going to test you on this, Roops. No, I mean, of course you are. I am much better, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I was I trying to you, offer it up to you yeah. so you could offer me no, I mean, I, a similar... It's hard to tell because Top Trump cards came out and I think just before you came. So you yeah, never I didn't get any memorabilia. So didn't I even that make that the DVD. Do you know what I mean? I just missed um, <laughs> uh, Well, it depends what you're basing, basing it on. You know, he can do more with his magic. Right. Uh, so I didn't really need a sword, no, some would say. I would think as the archetypal perfect knight, I would say I'm better than anybody, in fact. <laughs> You're the only one that's left alive at the end. And that, yeah. And Tom. Tom as well. Personal. Sure. Yeah. Sure. The only one of substance left alive. Substance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Tom's forgettable, apparently. Yeah. Um, which one is he? Which one is he? Yeah. Oh, he's, Tom's the one that, that can't afford full chain mail. That's it. <laughs> I, I, I always make this joke about chainmail because obviously Tom's got a very impressive chainmail. Chainmail. Um, <laughs> that obviously he, his was always cut off. But like I, I never understood M- Mordred when Mordred went evil. That suddenly he went into what the chainmail store and went. So guys, no longer good. I'm bad. And they went, step this way, have some black chain mail. Yeah. <laughs> Come into the dark section, sir. We've been, ah, Maud, Sir Mordred, we've been waiting for you. <laughs> like, it just, I, never, I kept saying to Johnny and Julian, just because he's evil doesn't mean his chain mail has to be black. And they were like, like magical. no, no, it tells them. It's, yeah. it's magical. It's like, a wedding, bride or groom, evil or good. <laughs> <laughs> There's no in between. Say, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's very funny. But, um, but we do love the fact that Leon is. He does seem to be that perfect knight. He seems to fit that romantic notion of what I guess everyone thinks a knight should be. Would you say? Yeah, I think so. I think it's weird. Uh, <laughs> How much did you pay her? <laughs> no, they don't know what we're talking about. Yeah, you pay <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's just weird playing this kind of Adonis and this thing that everyone wants to be. Um, it's just it's a hard, you know, four years on, still having to keep up that. Um, yeah. You know that. Um, <laughs> that weekend chainmail. That is, going yeah. Into I've got to let it go at some point. It's very <laughs> hard. Um, no, I, it's yeah. I think it's it's weird because obviously I was only meant to be in I think one scene, and I turned up and uh, did that scene. I auditioned for two nights: one who got killed, and then one who. Uh, sorry, that's all the time I got. That's my phone. <laughs> um, and and yes, yeah, so I got the role of Leon and turned up and went. I uh, did my line very badly, as I think people know. I forgot it. And, um, and then they said, actually, could you say some other lines and could you do some more things? And I was like, yeah, okay, I'll do, I'll do some things. And then, then it kind of, I think they just saw the charisma I had and went, this guy <laughs> is going to... This guy. This guy, this is, guy gonna, is going If places. we go with this guy, people in Sri Lanka will stop and people in America, this show is going to become huge. <laughs> huge in Sri Lanka. Yeah, That's people will be, he'll, he'll be going to Comic-Cons four years after the show's finished <laughs> if we give him more scenes. And here we are. Hey. And, so uh, thanks. So Let's thank thanks Rubes. to me. But, give Rubes a round of yeah. applause. No, it is good. I think there's something great about, in all seriousness, the kind of, the knights, I think what was so great is playing these roles, and all of us in a way that showed kind of kindness and, and uh, kind of, it was all about the being decent or, you know, good and evil and, and people, treating people with respect, and, and I think, weirdly, that's what I think we crave in, in our world we don't do enough of, and I think there is that thing of playing a, a, a simple character that is basically trying to do what is good and uh, protecting people and being kind and 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 that is why the show is so good and 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 why it was a joy to to play and do you think that i mean because one of the things i thought is you know is leon almost too good to be true i mean he's he's <laughs> arthur's people right hand that. i explain <laughs> he's arthur's <laughs> I'm getting, I'm getting. <laughs> 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 
Come on, come on. You've got to listen to this. Well, so, because, you know, was he envious in a way of Arthur at some point? Because, you know, they had that relationship with Gwen, mm. you know, and then he gets married to, she gets married to Arthur. Was there any kind of sort of jealousy there in any way? I think, I think what, uh, we've all said this before, I think because of the nature of the show, again, there was a lot of stuff with the Knights, especially, that uh, they couldn't develop as much as we would have liked in mm. terms of storylines or if things were in scripts they've got to keep to a 50 minute slot and so some things would be cut and I think there was elements of that of, of you know Arthur was definitely the guy that everyone looked up to especially Leon looked up to but I think there was you know I said this yesterday that Leon didn't have any romantic uh, storylines or there was nothing so it was quite a, um, a kind of you know there's one story that says maybe he looked up to Arthur and loved, would have done anything for him but I, I think, I don't know, I think there might have been a, a kind of jealousy of the fact he was number one. And I always like to think that Leon secretly at the end became evil? king. No, well, <laughs> either evil. I was hoping early on that actually Morgana, when I, after the end of season two when the dragons got me and I, I was told I was coming back, which my family were like, uh, has he seen the episode? I think Leon died. Uh, how do we break it to him? Let's wait till after Christmas. Um, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, and I thought that maybe Morgana would you know, rescue me and make me, uh, make me evil, but that wasn't to be. So I think, I think there was a lot more that could have, we could have um, gone with, but I think, um, I, no, I don't think he was jealous of them. Mm. I think he was in awe, but I do think that him and Gwen, Leon and Gwen, uh, Gwen ended up uh, together at the end of the whole show and ruined Camelot. <laughs> ruined Camelot yeah. to you the You are grind. evil, really. I am, yeah. deep down. <laughs> See, I am too good to be true. And um, Alex, obviously, with Mordred, there's that sort of seminal scene where he essentially turns then against Camelot. And Gwen always says that the battle for Albion was between sorcery and love. Do you think it's sort of ironic in a way that it's Mordred's love dying that turns him against Camelot? Yeah, well, uh, the show is all about love, really. Mm -hmm. And um, um, Mordred was so trusting to everyone and required a lot of trust back. Mm -hmm. He trusted Morgana. He also trusted Arthur and would do anything for him. But then when Kara comes into his life, mm -hmm. Kara was the sort of the tipping point, really, for the whole show. Um, yeah, that, what Gwen says is, is really accurate about that, the, the sorcery and love thing. But for, but for Mordred, he was so um, conflicted and complicated as mm -hmm. a character to play. Um, and. I, I, I can remember just jump, jumping for joy, but not in the right reasons, for, for, for being the person that revealed who Emrys was or who mm. Merlin was. Yeah. I, was, I was just so grateful that I got that. I was the one that told Morgana. I was like, yeah. yes! <laughs> and I was like, I can't, and then also I kind of wanted the scene to continue and go, it's, I, mean, I, mean, I know who you're searching for. Emrys is Merlin. And then the camera keeps rolling and I go, how did you not know? <laughs> <laughs> like, really? Like it was right there. <laughs> How did you not know? <laughs> they should have absolutely done that. <laughs> they that should have. Like, and then just, or just like, just not even with a look, like. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know so yeah. Like, I was like, oh. Yeah, and then she goes, <laughs> of course. <laughs> oh, five years. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. All right, guys, well, we want to give you all a chance to ask some questions. I'm sure some of you do. So there's two mics, one this left, one right, if you want to... Oh, there are. There are, yeah, yeah in, the, in the background. So if you want to line up by those, then you can ask your questions. Um, but I actually, I spoke to uh, Katie recently, who plays Morgana, and she said that one of the things about... How is she? She, she's mm. good. Good. <laughs> good Lena Luther now. And um, so she said that one of the things about having played Morgana is that now that when she's in a period drama and she, um, or when she has to dress up in period, period clothes, she sort of feels like she's being morgana Like, so when she's in a corset, because she was, though she was always in a corset and stuff, mm. wasn't she? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, but, um, I could. Yeah, it must be. And she had a time. hard. I mean, it took her a long time. <laughs> I think there was a lot. Yeah, she would be in, especially evil Katie. Was, evil Katie. Long, long days. Pro long process for yeah. her to get from the, all the wig and the mm. wig, the sort of hair and everything. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. does I mean, especially because you're in, say, like the sign now. Yeah. When you sort of get back into <coughs> period clothes, does it sort of remind you of the Merlin days? Not really, no, because from. Mordred had like three looks, like less, three looks. <laughs> he had sort of like druid look, which was like, you know, a huge scarf and all that sort of, and then the chain mail, and then the chain mail sort of just got more heavier. The evil and, chain and, mail. The dark chain mail, yeah. <laughs> so it was, but no, the, the Philippe 
it's the heels, man. It's the heels yeah. for Philippe. It's, uh, it's a killer. Got an ama- I've got amazing calves now, so thank you. For that. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, so the, no, it doesn't really remind me of that, but I just want, we were talking yesterday, weren't we? I just, I just want to do a show in jeans and a T-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> just want to, I want to come in in the morning in jeans and T-shirt, get out of my jeans and T-shirt, put on other people, put on some jeans and T-shirt, and then I'll be the character. I don't want to spend... Philippe's transformation is almost two hours. Oh, wow. So I get picked up at 5 a.m. and it's, you know, wig 45 minutes to an hour, makeup, costume, the whole thing. So I just want it to be quick and easy. What would your jeans and t-shirt, t-shirts show be? God, anything. I'll take anything at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> anything, anything. A Hackney, Hackney Tower slasher film where I get murdered first just so I can turn up and do the jeans and t-shirt. Anyway. So you have like a bloody jeans and t-shirt? Yeah, a horror like film. I'll do a horror film again, yeah. I'll do a horror <laughs> film. Yeah, I'll do anything. What about you, Rupert? What would you He's do? just checking his phone. I'm just checking. No, it's just buzzing because I'm so really unpopular. Uh, <laughs> I've just been offered some job wearing jeans, jeans and, and t-shirts. T-shirt. Uh, um, <laughs> What was my job? Well, as in, what? Oh, I don't know. No, I think something uh, actiony. Mm-hmm. Uh, it'd be nice to, because all the running and all the stuff we had to do in Chamber and all that, it was so, it was quite a hard work. I remember being chased by a horse and running so fast <laughs> and, in this chamber. And then we about the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no way. Just being chased yeah. by a horse. Just love to do that. Um, <laughs> but just going, actually, it'd be quite nice to wear trainers. It'd be much easier. Actually, Richard Wilson was the only man who. His shoes were amazing because they were actually, I think, Nike Air Max. Yeah, but oh, really? had been, been made. like, but had swayed over them. I was like, that is, that's when you know wow. you've made. Do you know it, what? The, an, you... Another thing about the chainmail, which was, which was always a problem, is that if you just sat down on the horse or anything like that, it would just automatically yeah, give you a little rolls. beer gut. Yeah. <laughs> and you just, you just looked like yeah. you'd just been, you know, in the Camelot Tavern, just drinking yourself silly. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Okay, so if we take the first question on this side. Hi. Um, Hi. Hi. What's your name? My name's Amy. Hi, Amy. They ask us the question. <laughs> How are you today? I'm I'm back okay. in the trend. What was your favourite episode? Favourite scene. <laughs> Go. <laughs> I was wondering if you ship Mirtha, which is Merlin and Arthur. Is Ooh. it? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> what hell surprise. Um, Oh, God, I'm not, I'm not answering this one. Last time I answered this one, I got into so much trouble. <laughs> I did that interview on BBC Radio like, before Christmas, and I said that I do think it's a love story. Not in that way, but a love story between two men. Not in that way. Because <laughs> love can be love. Everything's love. Love is love. Um, and, yeah, I think a lot of people were like, oh, come on, Alex. <laughs> I'm sitting on the fence on this one, Amy. Sorry. No comment. <laughs> Oops. Oh, is it down to me? <laughs> uh, no, what I'm saying, I think, the, 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 again, the beauty of that relationship is that it was a, you know, it was a, a really touching. The end of the series it is, was very moving for everyone. I think some of you guys found it quite emotional as well. Um, and I think you saw <laughs> genuine, yeah, genu- their genuine love for each other. And I think, um, yeah, you know, I think the thing with the show and with any fancy show is that what's brilliant is there are lots of uh, people take different things from it. And, uh, and can add things to it. And when I watched it, did I go, oh, that's a couple who are, you know, are they together? I, I didn't see it necessarily like that. It's not to mean that uh, that wasn't a part of it. And there was definitely an underlying, I think just love and respect between the two of them, which is extraordinary, whatever that means, as Alex was saying. I think it's, it was great to see uh, showing the vulnerability of Arthur coming out and, and Merlin um, say, or constantly saving this guy who he cared about his life. And, uh, yeah, I think, I think it's, it was... I don't know whether I'd ship it. I don't know. I don't know, the, I, I don't know how it kind of works. I've read some filthy things about my character. <laughs> so I don't want to encourage that. I mean, I've, I've learned some things that I can never unlearn, alas. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's all part of the fun, isn't it? And fancy and fandom is and the fact is, that, that people do see things and, and yeah. mash up things. And, uh, and it's, I think that's fantastic. I'm not saying no. I think if you believe in that and want to believe in it, that's fantastic. Are you saying you're into fan fiction? I'm not saying I'm into it. Uh, <laughs> You're just, just I've read it. I've, I've read apparently how you're He's initiated of, into the of... nights is uh, I, amazing. I thought it was just show how good you are at fighting, but no. Um, I, I have read some early on. I think we, there were times we'd kind of go, have you seen this? 
Have you seen this? It was, I mean, it's quite full on and brilliantly <laughs> written. Um, but yeah, yeah, very eye opening. <laughs> uh, question on that side. Hi again, guys. Hello. Uh, first of all, I just wanted to thank you for being here. It's always nice to meet you. And I wanted to know uh, if you had some dreams that you hadn't fulfilled yet that had nothing to do with your professional, professional lives, sorry. D dreams that we haven't fulfilled? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you got? All day. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Nothing you can say. Uh, uh, Just the jeans and t-shirt dream. That's it. <laughs> yeah, jeans and t-shirt. Now, that's, that's with Korea. Um, I think we all have, haven't we? Every single one of us yeah. in this no, I, It's <sighs> hard. That's a really hard question. On a Come Sunday. find us later. We'll give you some <laughs> nuggets of truth. I think it's just, uh, no, no, I was about to get deep. I don't think I can. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, like visiting places or swimming yeah, or dolphins, yeah, I don't yeah, know. Okay. I thought we were going like proper deep, you know. Yeah. Skim the surface. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. I'd love to go to uh, mm. <laughs> Okay, see you next year. Thank we'll you. See you <laughs> Really okay, I mean, it's just a, another level question, that. Yeah. Another level. Yeah. Isn't uh, it? Yeah, you need, you need a bit of That's too big. Yeah. That's, like um, that's not, song not, even my, not even my therapist knows that sort of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, on this side, do you want to ask your question? Yes. Hi, guys. Hi. Um, Hi. I just wanted to know, what's it like feeling that you've eternally tainted Christmas for everyone that watched the season finale? <laughs> Because it's ruined for me forever. So well, I, I, did, I said that in, like, in that interview. I said, I hope it doesn't ruin people's Christmases. And it's, well, now, become, it's, now, become, it's now become a gif that people <laughs> use. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I just remember that. I mean, it was harsh. Yeah, Christmas it was. Eve. And it was, but then I think everyone saw it coming. Everyone, I think most people knew it was the end of the show and knew that people had to fall. Not everyone, obviously. <laughs> I thought it was quite a great Christmas. So Leon lived. <laughs> <laughs> it to was go like, Camelot. Yeah, I was like... You know, uh, so I, I thought, I mean, some people see it differently. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I didn't think Christmas could get, could get any better. No, I, I think it's harsh, but it's, yeah. you know, it had to end dramatically. And it's amazing how passionate you guys all are about the show and, and I think, and about the ending and how some people are so angry about it. And um, which I know I, I hate, I don't want you all to be angry, but it's amazing that you care so much about the show that people found it very harsh. Um, and, and that's kind of, in a way, it, did what it set out to do. You know, it, uh, it, if people went, oh, that's, that's a shame, then, that, then it meant that the last five years have been was for nothing, pointless. Yeah. Yeah, so. so I'm sorry for ruining Christmas, but you know. There, there, you know Is I, that Father Christmas actually coming in? Oh no, sorry, that's really weird. I think <laughs> sorry, it from a distance, I was like, <laughs> he's come to go, you have ruined Christmas. <laughs> wow. <So. laughs> wow, sorry. Oh, okay, no. that's all right. <laughs> Everyone else can see that, yeah? It's not just me. <laughs> what are you talking about, Rupert? <laughs> um, but, I mean, having spoken about the ending, has there been any talk about rebooting it at all? It's, I've always answered this with, it's not really up to us, mm -hmm. is it? Right no. now, it's never been up to us. Mm -hmm. People think that actors have the power to bring it back. And we don't... Uh, really? I think it's weird because I think with the fans we've got, which are incredible and continue to be, I think that, you know, there's definitely, you hear of these shows now that... Um, yeah, they get that, was it? Um, being Veronica Mars, isn't it? Veronica Mars, and there's also the one, not Peaky Blinders, is the other one, um, yeah, Ripper Street. Ripper, Ripper Street, Street got brought back from fans, and, and Firefly and as well, got, you know, and there's, there are shows that... Mm -hmm. But it's trying to get everyone together, and I think all of us would probably think, if everyone could be together to do something, they would... We'd jump we'd do it, but really the chance of to, but yeah. the, chance of the idea schedules. that everyone going to be free at a certain point, yeah. I, uh, I just don't see it happening. And also to suddenly do a new series or do something and ruin it, we'd feel, we'd feel really guilty, I think, if suddenly it went, oh, that's a real shame. But I know, you know, the guys have written some amazing episodes, fans of what could happen next. Season and, six and, yeah. and all that, yeah. Um, so I don't think it will happen, but mm -hmm. it would be fun. Uh, we've got a Superman over here. Superman, hi. 
super boy, actually, but super no boy. worries. <laughs> My sincere apologies. I'm so sorry. It, it's fine. Uh, this question's for Alex. Oh, sorry, And Alex. I am going against every human nature of myself to ask this. Oh, God, what is it? Tra <laughs> traditionally, Arthur is the father of Mordred. And have you had moments where you would call Bradley daddy? <laughs> We go back to the dream question. Yeah, that dream was much easier. Um, did you just dab? No, I, I bowed. I thought that. you went. Uh, that's a great way to end the question. I'm not. Do you ever call Bradley Daddy? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no. <laughs> but boy, did I wish I did. Thank you. Um, no. Cool. <laughs> Thank you, Superboy, for your amazing contribution. I'm afraid you've got to follow that, so... <laughs> What's your question? Well, it is actually about oh, the dear. myths, sort of. I was going to ask, um, obviously, since Merlin, and also for Alex Versailles as well, has, like, historical and mythological background, mm -hmm. did you do any research about that, or did you become interested in it while you were filming, or anything? <laughs> For Merlin, I n already knew a bit about, especially about Mordred's journey. There, there's, a, there's some amazing stories. There's one where you, it's quite dark ones about putting Guinevere in, the, in a casket and stuff. There's a lot of crazy stories about that. Um, so I knew a lot about that, actually, before I did it. And I, and I actually read a book. But with them, um, I don't know. <laughs> it was like, A is for apple. <laughs> Is that but no? Um, and, and about about the bit of the Merlin mythology before I before I got, but with Versailles, um, no, I didn't. I just I sort of trusted the, the script and stuff. Really, I trusted the showrunners, and I just come from that school of acting, really, where sometimes I think research gets in the way. It's not gonna, for me. It doesn't change much. I just it's about the script and the contributing team and creative team that come together to create something rather than if you go up to, like, if something's not in the script but you've read about it in a, and you've done your research, you go, well, Philippe wouldn't have, Philippe would be missing two teeth and he'd have a limp because I read it in this book. And they're like, well, that doesn't quite work with the show and you'd want to integrate it and force something in because you've read about it. Kind of goes against, so that sometimes research, for me, gets in the way. What about you? Did you research her? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I, again, I mean, Sir Leon's a, a fictitious character, um, so, and, and not in any of the books, and uh, I don't know, I've read bits of it and seen episodes in series one, um, but you're right, I think you are right, I think there's some stuff, if you're playing, it, it depends on the project. Of course Mer it does, yeah. And, you know, again, as you say, if you're constantly getting to producers going, well, actually, this is what happened, I think this should happen, and, uh, and this, this, you've got to get this in, it... it yeah, it's it's difficult. It's difficult. But you do try and read as much. And normally, it happens at the end of um, at the end of the shows. You do. You find little things out. And I find it with plays and things. You you read things. And, and it's amazing, like how open you are to things. You learn stuff. Um, you know, if you read every play written by the author of a play you're doing now, it doesn't necessarily mean that's not necessarily good research. You can go. I've done really good work here because I've done this, and I can then in the rehearsal room say this and make myself sound intelligent. Um, but I, I think it depends on the jobs. For Merlin, I, I didn't read anything. Um. I think you have to, um, they, they, they hire us as actors to, to, to act and to, to deliver a good performance on screen or on stage. And you have to then trust that they have done their research. And if they are writers, they would have done their work to deliver their work, which is the script. So it's about two meetings of people. And I think that's, you know. Is there anything that you learn on Merlin that you've sort of used? in for the you know, subsequent projects. So yeah, well, for horse riding. Horse riding, yeah. horse riding is the main thing that, like, I hadn't, had never been on a horse, was terrified of horses, um, and went on to... No, it's weird, because when you talk, it's slightly delayed. Brilliant. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, went on a horse, um, to the horse master for Merlin um, in France, called Chino. You, yeah, you're no, right. No, no, Chino. Um, <laughs> And, um, and also, he was the same horse master for Versailles. Okay. So, I, my, the horse that I learned to ride backwards on in Merlin, 
Mm -hmm. It was called Nardo. And Nardo is the same horse that plays dead in my lap in Versailles in the war scenes. Wow. And I learned, I practiced on Nardo when I went back to do Versailles. So there's a really lovely link yeah. between same horse master, same horse, literally the same yeah. horse. And it, was more, it was Katie's horse, Nardo. It was Katie's, the white one. Um, so yeah, it was, um, so horse riding is the... Because I had the same on the White Queen, it was Chino as well. Was it Chino so, yeah, as well? So it's weird. I, so, so you turn up and you go, that's one thing I don't have to worry about. Because first day on Merlin, you're like, ah, oh, it's terrifying. Uh, and then you get to know and you see Chino and you trust them and, and you know. And they're just the most yeah, amazing they're horses. They're like and the so Lamborghini. They, and then you look really cool. You look great. You're like, don't worry. And you get on and go, wow, this guy's just turned up and he's like galloping around. <laughs> look at the way that horse is. And it's weird, like the, the horses generally, I got really close to. Um, my horses are the one in Wales and in, in France, and you do kind of get to know them really well. And, and when you'd come back from season, they'd be really pleased to see you. And it was, I, I love it. And, uh, you, you, and yeah, you do, you build up a connection with, with, yeah. with a horse, and, and sometimes everything um, clicks. And the horses are so, they're such a smart, smart animal mm. that they know, like in season three of Versailles, which I've just finished filming, you go for like a two week little sort of recap horse riding before you start filming. The horse came running over to me, the same horse, like literally <laughs> straight over, knows exactly what you're doing, knows exactly. So it's just, it's an amazing skill that will actually stay with us forever. Yeah. Cause you know, there's gonna be so many cowboy films. <laughs> yeah. And jeans and t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Here's hoping. You're right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, a question over this side. Hello. Hi. Oh yeah. Um, you were saying that Bradley James is a joker when you were doing the reproof for yeah. episodes one and two. Um, was there many uh, pranks and practical jokes on the set? And if so, who was the That's biggest joker? Good. We should always have an uh, answer yeah, ready answer. for this, because we never do, do we? <laughs> there were kind of things that I remember, like with Bradley, it was kind of more offset um, that we would, I think Bradley once hid one of Tom's shoes uh, above his door on his trailer and just um, filmed him going, oh, where is it? Come on. And it was literally right behind him. Uh, <laughs> uh, were, I'm trying to didn't, didn't Bradley take, eat all of Tom Hopper's, or the Tom, all of that, the, Tom was obsessed with the um, Nature Valley health uh, bars. Yeah. Obsessed with oh, them. As Bradley was, yeah. And Bradley ate all of Tom's. Yeah. So the, Tom, Tom obviously did a tweet about it, I love Nature Valley, and they were like, we'll send you boxes. So you end up having this big box full of these Nature Valley health bars, these oak bars, in his dressing room in Cardiff. And Bradley went in and, I don't think he ate them all, but he just took all the wrappers off them and just threw all the wrappers in the room. So obviously Tom walks in and goes, <laughs> Yeah. So Bradley was the bit of the, the, yeah, the prankster, yeah. I think there's a few different things and, and not... Uh, Colin was always making fun. Colin, yeah. you, you, you've seen the bloopers, right? Colin, with the, he'd wear the glasses with the funny eyes and, you know, we'd have a lot of fun, actually, on the yeah. job, wouldn't we? We never took ourselves too seriously. Well, I think you've got to be careful because also, as actors, when you're like when you're trying to do practical jokes on camera it's not just about act Ooh, sorry. <laughs> it's not just about the actors it's because uh, if you do something that you think's hilarious and then the rest of the crew are like filming it and then getting the sound and your makeup's checked and then you do something silly that it's like they're going this is just wasted 10 minutes of my day and so you've got to know it's really 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 funny <laughs> to know that everyone will go actually no that's fine that's fine but that's that was definitely it was more kind of being silly on set or being able to just be pulling a face off camera or doing i think for me i used to inadvertently try and put people off not on purpose but it, i've said this before but every time it wasn't on me if, if they were when they were filming me i'd remember my lines and when it was on the other person i was off camera i would always forget my lines and i would feel so bad because it looks like i was trying to mess them up that i would just make up a line and the stuff that came out of my mouth was just the weirdest things in the world so i would then inadvertently almost make them laugh while I was trying to save them and it was uh, yeah so there's a few uh, hilarious things that happened but um, not always planned um, yeah thank you thank you uh, on the side your last question hi uh, I have two questions uh, my first question is for Alex so I was wondering if Mordred had lived do you think many years later he might uh, ever uh, regret killing Arthur if Mordred had lived do you think he would, and many years later, do you think he would regret killing Arthur? Yeah. Probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he sat, uh, so he's sat there on his own, he's got no friends. <laughs> All the druids have left him. Sir Leon's now king of Camelot. He's just sat there going, I made a huge I mistake. Made a huge mistake. <laughs> but don't worry, I've got magic, and I'll bring him back. Um, yeah, no, I think he would have, actually. 
Mordred doing what he did was in uh, almost brainwashed by Morgana to do something that he never really sort of wanted to do. Um, and that, I try to show that regret visually by smiling at the end when he's, when he's dying. I try to sort of show Mordred's kind of freedom and release of going, oh, thank God this is all over with, with that look when they're both together. Um, that was the plan. But yeah, I, th I think so. I think he would have. Just, you know, for the sake of having a season six, really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, ultimately, I guess the question was, you know, should Camelot have allowed magic or not? What is your opinion? For sure. For sure. For sure. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> That's my answer. That's good. Thank you. I committed to that. Yeah. And <laughs> I also time. have Four seven. times. <laughs> Second question. Oh, sorry, uh, yeah, second question. Yeah, and for both of you, uh, if you could rewrite the ending, uh, what's your version would be? What would you change or add to the finale? That Mordred would have lived. <laughs> I changed nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, another question on that side. Hi. Um, Hi. Hi. If a show did get rebooted for the future, what do you think your characters would have been up to? If I had a few, um, um, I said, I've said this before, I think. Um, uh, Mordred would probably be in the circus. <laughs> <laughs> just like, you know, people would be like, oh my God, that's amazing. And he's just like magicking, druiding stuff. Like. Or he's, you know, got a sellout show in the Piccadilly Theatre. He's like Darren Brown, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so then when I open a karaoke bar, um, yeah. <laughs> In Camelot. In Camelot. Camelot, kar Camelot nah. karaoke. Yeah. Camelot or, or a chain Camelot. of healthy Camelot. fast food called Leon. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, I um, have a question from Brian, who's the owner of MCM. Oh, no. Yeah. What's <laughs> Rupert, did you enjoy <laughs> doing the Philadelphia TV advert? <laughs> Brian, 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 wow. that's low, man. Is. Jeez. There was an MCM that I came to, and that's all I got was. Um, uh, I got a question. Do you like Philadelphia? And it's like brilliant. Um, <laughs> did I enjoy it? Uh, yeah, I did. It was really good. Actually, the DOP of that actually was a DOP on Empire Strikes Back. Um, so I worked with some amazing people on it. Wow. Uh, yeah. So in your face, anyone looking down on me. <laughs> Um, also, it paid me a lot of money, so uh, <laughs> no, I was laughing. very happy. So, yeah, I mean, sadly, that product is no longer available, I don't oh, think. I know, otherwise you'd have, um, like, free supply. Yeah, so, um, the product yeah. product is no longer available. No, it's not. It's a shame. It's a shame. Um, yeah. Your campaign didn't work. It didn't. It didn't. <laughs> I know. It's a shame. Okay, question on this one. Hi, guys. Um, Hi. My question is... Uh, if you were to have Merlin cross over with another TV show, what would you choose? Ooh, that's a good question. It's a good question. Um, uh, what would I choose? Merlin crossover. Merlin crossover. Mm. Yeah, if you were to have them like interact with another fictional character from another Merlin. like show or even movie, you know, some sort of oh, universe. Oh, it's difficult. Um, uh, ooh. <laughs> um, let's go with. It's like pick a show. Really, I know, isn't it? It's pick a show. I'm going to say um, Merlin and. Uh, let's just. I say Star Wars, because that'd be quite fun. Yeah. Or like, Doctor Who. No, because like, 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 Mordred, like Mordred and Chewbacca, just like. <laughs> yeah, that'd be good. And R2D2 and C3PO and Sir Leon just walking across the desert. That's the dream. That's, That's the, the dream, dream baby. Yeah. I yeah. Like that. <laughs> And because it'd be great, because you'd have, you know, Arthur versus Han Solo and stuff like that. You'd have great fights, wouldn't you? Who would win that battle? Han Solo, for Han sure. Solo, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you. And a uh, question over oh, here. Hello. Yeah. hello. Hi. Hi. What's your name? Harry. Yeah. And I know because <laughs> you're my uncle. Whoa! <laughs> Uh, all of these. Yeah, oh, I'm related to everyone here. <laughs> Hello, Rupert's family. This is Harry's first convention. Hi, Harry. Don't ask me or embarrass me too much. I'm not please, do, please do. Please <laughs> do. Uh, I was going to ask to both of you, um, what was your favourite like scene to act out? 
Well, good question. I don't actually. One, Harry came to see one of the scenes being filmed, didn't you? When you were very yeah. small, and he's yeah. he's actually one of the only people who's got a real Merlin cape that was made for him. Um, he's very lucky. It's not with him now, so don't try and steal it off. Don't try and steal it. Favorite scene? It was. Uh, I think for me, it was always the battle scenes. You know, when you did all the sword fights and got to. Um, f have these huge battles and, and win and actually I remember one of the first times in France in the castle and there was a dragon that, uh, that had flames flying and it was raining and we were running around and it was just so cool and it was like they had flamethrowers there actually there and flaming people who were in, in fire resistant cloaks and all the stunt guys were being incredible uh, and it just looked amazing and then obviously once they added the CGI dragon it was even cooler and so it was just watching it was just like, this is the best thing in the world. And that was definitely my favorite scene that just, you know, afterwards you had loads of other great scenes, but that was... Yeah, I, um, I'm going to say the same. The, the, the battle of um, the battle of Camelan, that filming all of that with Justin, um, the, um, the director, he, had this, he was doing these really cool things where he'd have two cameras filming at the same time. And they would be filming the same, they'd be one on top of the other, filming exactly the same frame, exactly the same shot, but one was a tighter, lens and one was a wide lens so it meant that the, there's an amazing effect in those battles where it would zoom in and zoom out and punch in and punch out without messing with the thing so you, you kept thinking why are we doing this it, was, it took a long time didn't it but the, the look of it and the end was amazing so yeah I love doing all the fight sequences it was great what was your favorite scene together did we have one Rubes uh I think it's probably the ones when you're riding on a horse backwards. That, that backwards. Yeah, the early ones. Do you know what? Actually, my, one, of my, <laughs> one of my favorite scenes, actually, as well, for acting purposes, was Drawing of the Dark, is when Mordred is running away with Kara. He's running away. And he gets stopped, and he, has, and he pleads to all of the knights. They're trying to get him to come back, and he pleads with all of them, and he looks, and he goes, Gwen and Sir Leon. And that was nice, because, you know, and then Tom, and then Percival comes and just whacks him across the head. Mm. Um, but that was great, with working with Declan, the director, and it was, it was just me and the knights surrounded me, and it was it kind of feeling like you're telling your best mates, like, come on, help me here. So that was, that, we had, that was a nice scene yeah. to have. I mean, there's so many, there's so many great moments and memories. And, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Um, so what is next for you both? Uh, Jeans and T-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, um, thanks, Harry. Good question. Um, uh, I've just finished doing Versailles season three. I finished two weeks ago, um, and I'm actually, funnily enough, working with the director that directed Dra Drawing of the Dark, Declan O'Dwyer. He ended up doing Crazy Head, which is another Shine show, and he did Barbarians Rising with me. I've worked with him on Merlin, Barbarians Rising, and now he's got his he's got a feature film. And I'm filming in December with him. Mm -hmm. So Declan's been one of the, the directors from Merlin that keeps employing me, which is, thank you, Declan. <laughs> no, it's lovely. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do, um, I'm gonna do and actually, I'm, funny enough, I'm doing a jeans and a t-shirt in that. <laughs> I am. It's a modern day gangster film. Finally. So, um, so yeah, I'm doing that. So that's, I'm doing that in November, December in, um, in London and in Ireland. So doing a couple of days. So awesome. that's, what I'm, that's what I'm doing next, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, for me, I've just finished doing a little thing for ITV, and uh, I don't know really. I'm gonna, I'm auditioning, and it's been quite nice. Quite nice, have a bit of time off. So we'll see. Watch we'll the see. space. Watch this space. Not this one. That'll be really this boring. Space. This little bit here. <laughs> this I space. I think we've got time for your question, and then that's it. So, what's your question? Hi. Um, Hi. You talked a lot about uh, horses with Malin. Was there any point at which there was a particularly funny moment where something? gone wrong with the horses. Any point that went wrong? Yeah. Yeah, I got on my horse who I adored in, in, in Wales and I was half on and the horse just bolted. And it being me, because they people thought I was a joker, everyone was going, <laughs> look at that, get the camera on it. And I'm going, oh, like literally, <laughs> I'm half on and my horse is bucking and throws me off and I fly into this, uh, this fence and it's like really thick and luckily I was wearing chainmail. I fall on the ground, I heard, get an ambulance, get, and I was going, what, what's happened? I get up and was generally seeing stars going, uh, why, why, who needs an ambulance? And then they went, we need to check you out. So I ended up being taken to hospital. They refilmed the scene without me in it, even though I had all the lines. Uh, I get to the hospital with a guy in an earpiece who was like a, an assistant director. I'm waiting to be checked out in my chainmail. Everyone else in A&E is going, who the hell is this guy? <laughs> Because uh, he's also got, seems like a bodyguard with him. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that was, that was pretty horrific. That was, um, 
uh, yeah, and then it turned out that the horse I was on was actually pregnant that no one knew, so she was just getting slightly anxious of the six foot four guys sitting on her all the time. Um, but yeah, so it was, that was pretty scary, but I survived, and the chainmail saved me, so. Wow. That's good. We've got one last question, I think. Just yeah, for, just okay. The mic, oh. Can you do it? I think that you can turn Harry, the mic down. Do you, you want to take, the, you can pull, pull it out. Pull, up, yeah, pull, pull out, out the, the microphone. microphone. The microphone is out. Oh, is it? Oh, cool. Got it. Go for it, Tom. What's your favorite nephew? <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> Choose that wisely. Is that the name? My favorite nephew. Wow. Ooh, wow, that that's is really a, what, what a doozy to end on. Oh. <laughs> It is definitely. Yeah. I love all my nephews equally. Love. But I'll decide at Christmas, depending on what presents you buy me. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, thank you guys so much for entertaining. I think we us. all give you the same. Okay, cool. <laughs> that makes it easier. Yeah. Everyone, give a massive round of applause to Rupert and to Alex. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.